The next thing we will discuss is the Age Impairment Scale, or AIS for short. So far, we have determined for our patient their sensory level, neurological level, and neurological level of impairment. So we have right now uh, certain levels at the spinal cord that indicate where the uh, level of injury is. After that, we need to uh, have a picture about what the uh, clinical picture of the patient looks like below the level of the injury. So is this uh, injury, for example, complete? Does the patient have any function below the level of the injury? Or what does the case look like? And this is the purpose, basically, of the AIS, the impairment scale. So we have five categories, uh, ranging from A through E. And um, we will go over them right now. The first one is the complete injury, or Asia A. Uh, Asia B is for sensory incomplete, while, while C and D are for the motor incomplete injuries. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that the word complete here, or incomplete, does not, or specifically complete actually, does not really indicate that um, the injury is complete, so there is complete cut, so there is nothing below the level of the injury. It's not like that. Basically, to determine those levels, the first thing we need to do is to look at the sacral segments. And like we discussed previously, for the sacral segments, we will be doing a sensory exam of light touch and pin prick. So this will be on the 0, 1, 2 scale. In addition, there will be two extra things that we need to do at the sacral segment. If we look at, um, for example, this sheet here, so uh, at the lower part, in addition to the uh, sensory exam here at S45 on the right and on the left sides, we also have two other important things here, voluntary anal contraction and deep anal pressure. And what this means basically is that we will have, um, and this is usually done by the physician, uh, we, uh, we will have with the gloved finger, the physician will uh, put uh, the finger near the uh, anal sphincter and ask the patient to exert voluntary contraction on the finger. If the patient is able to do it, then we will indicate here yes. If not, then it will be a no. This is for the voluntary anal contraction. So this is a motor response. Whereas for the deep anal pressure, we will ask the patient about their ability to feel um, this type of pressure in the anal sphincter. And again, the answer is either yes or no. So for the S45 segment, we will have this row here specifying those different things that we will examine with the patient. And for the definition, if we go back, um, for the definition of complete or incomplete injury, basically, we will rely on function at the S45 segments. So uh, this is detailed information, and I will just skip and go to the summary that I've prepared here. Asia A is when the patient has complete injury, and basically it means that there is no sensory or motor function in the S45 segments. So there is nothing, and that's what we refer to as noon. So if I go back to this row here, if we say, if we see N here, so no anal contraction, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so no type of sensation in S45, and N for deep inner pressure, so this is the noon. If we see it here, then immediately we know that this is complete injury. Now, if the patient has sensory information, but not motor information, uh, sensory function, sorry, but not motor function below the level of the injury, and this is just briefly, then this is Asia B. So it is uh, considered sensory incomplete injury. There is some anal sens uh, sensation. Um, or, as we will see, sometimes some patients might have a motor function below the level of the injury, but if uh, this, uh, to specify for Asia B, uh, the motor function should not exceed three levels below the motor level on each side. So Asia A is complete injury. Asia B is sensory incomplete in, uh, injury. Now Asia C and D are motor incomplete. So the patient has function at S45. Now the difference between these two is that 
for most for the most part most muscles below the level of the injury in AJC have a motor um, manual muscle test uh, score less than three whereas for Asia D it's most muscles are greater than or equal to uh, MMT score of three so this is basically those uh, scales. Uh, now, if the patient has intact function of the spinal cord, then this would classify as Asia E. Why would we say this? Why would we, uh, we need um, a grade for the normal function? Basically, as we will see, patients sometimes progress through those levels or improve um, with the recovery of function after the injury. And so a patient might be, uh, for example, Asia C or Asia D, and later on, they might progress to AJE. So it doesn't mean that we as healthy people are AJE. This is not used for healthy people. It's just used to refer to patients who were some kind of impairment, uh, had some kind of impairment before, and then progressed to have an intact spinal cord.